Welcome to the sanctuary of Northminster Presbyterian Church, and welcome to our time of worship together. I'm Pastor Jack McNary, and I'm glad that you have joined with us on this day. You know, the rules have changed once again, and so it's worked out that we're back here in the sanctuary, but unfortunately, you can't be. But I would remind you, as while you can't get to us, we can come to you in worship each week. So I hope you join us, and I hope you tell your friends about joining us in worship each week. I also want to remind you that if you haven't sent in your pledge card for 2021, please make sure you do that this coming week. We need to finalize what things are, we hope, are going to look like for the next year. Today, we continue our series on a virtuous life as we look at being a caring, kind, and a compassionate Christian. So come, let's worship God together. Join me in our call to worship. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Praise be to the Father. Our thoughts are on God's loving kindness. Praise be to the Son. Our God is our guide forever and ever. Praise be to the Holy Spirit. Let us worship our merciful and loving God. in God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice which is more than liberty. There is no place 
is where earth's sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where earth's failings have such kindly judgment given. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more faithful, we would gladly trust God's word, and our lives reflect thanksgiving for the goodness of our Lord. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we come before you with joy in our hearts. You love us with an everlasting love. You forgive our sins and lead us in the paths of your righteousness. Even when we go astray, you are there for us. We enter into worship this day full of praise for you. Help us to be as kind and compassionate to others as you are to us. May our lives reflect our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. All praise be to you. Hallelujah and amen. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the moontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves, sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves, going forth with weeping. Sowing for the master, though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Many of you have sent in your pledges for 2021. 
Thank you. These will go a long way in helping our session decide on the budget for 2021. If you have not yet sent in your pledge, please do so soon. We are also grateful for the weekly tithes and offerings that come in. Your financial support is helping our staff and ministries here in Sacramento and around the world. Please mail in your checks or use electronic giving today. Thank you for all you do in support of Northminster Presbyterian Church. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, here we are again together, and I have some questions and some scenarios or scenes that I want you to think through with me today as we talk about compassion or kindness or caring. Do you ever feel sorry for somebody? Maybe something's going on in their life or you just see how things are going and you feel kind of sorry for them. Maybe they're not treated well or maybe something is going on in their life and you feel sorry for them. Well, that's good. The only trouble with feeling sorry for somebody is it doesn't go very far. God asks us not to just feel sorry for someone, not to just feel something, but to do something. Compassion, the word we're talking about today, is an active word. So let me ask you this. If you saw a friend or even a stranger who was on a bicycle and they hit a bump and over they went, would you just stand there and feel sorry for them? Or would you go and help them up? Maybe there's a friend of yours that's struggling with using Zoom or whatever it is you're using for your schooling these days, and they just can't quite make all the connections. Do you just feel sorry for them? Or through compassion, do you do something about it? Or maybe it's simply something around the house, maybe helping out mom and dad or your sister or brother or somebody. You just say, well, that's too bad for them. Or do you pitch in and help out? God calls each of us to act, to show our compassion to one another. You know, caring and feeling and having pity are all nice things, but they don't accomplish what God wants us to accomplish. So when you see a person in need, when you see a situation of which you can do something about, act, do it. Follow the word of God in your life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness that shows us in Jesus Christ how much you love and care for us. You were compassionate enough, Jesus, to go to the cross. Help us to be compassionate enough for others to do for them. And we pray this in your holy name. Amen. My loving kindness is better than love. Thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee thus will i bless thee i will lift up my hands unto thy name i lift my hands lord unto thy name i lift my hands lord unto thy name my lips shall praise thee Thus will I bless thee, I will lift up my hands unto thy name.
as we come together in prayer for and with one another. We have a number of people we want to celebrate with this week who are having birthdays. On Monday will be Nancy Seymour. On Wednesday, Mary Stewart. Thursday, Millie Fortner. And on Saturday, Hunter Middlecoff. To each and every one of you, a joyous and happy birthday to you and a great celebration of your life. O oh God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. A few days ago, we celebrated Veterans Day, and we want to give thanks for all of those in our congregation, as well as our country, who have served and served faithfully. So if you are someone who is a veteran, or you have a veteran in your family, thank you for your service. Thank you for their service for all of us. O oh God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. Last week, we mentioned and said and celebrated that Dorothy Varnum was having her 100th birthday, and we celebrated that. But a couple of days before her birthday, her daughter Peggy Willis passed away of cancer. And so while we celebrate Dorothy's 100 years, we also lift our hearts of love and care to Dorothy in these days. O God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. And Mary Holden had hip replacement surgery, and we are praying that that uh, will go well, not only went well, but her recovery will go well, and that she'll be out of pain and feeling good enough to join us as soon as we can all be get together again. O God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those who are first-line responders these days as the numbers seem to be going up again, not only here in California and in America, but around the world. And we pray for those who uh, test positive and those who are struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic right now. O oh God of goodness and mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you then to join me as we pray together. A loving and kind God who doesn't just pity us, who doesn't feel sorry for us, but with compassion, you come and walk with us. You are with us in hospital rooms. You are with us in nursing homes and care centers, retirement homes and those who are isolated in their own homes. We ask, Lord, that you would draw close in your compassion to them and to us. Lord, these are difficult days for all of us, and as the days get shorter and darker, as the days are colder and we have to be inside even more, we ask, Lord, that we would be able to draw on your strength to get through these days. Help us to know we're not alone in what's going on. Help us to know that whatever we are struggling with or whatever is a joy in our life, you are there with us. Lord, we're never alone because of your compassion from birth to death and then beyond your loving kindness is with us. Lord, we come before you this time with our own individual prayers. And so in these moments of silence, we offer them to you. And now, Lord, hear us as we pray that prayer your Son, Jesus, taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. compassion love that's never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of a savior the hope of nations My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king jesus shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king savior he can move the mountains my god is mighty to save is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king jesus shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king as we come to the lord's word today we find a familiar story in luke chapter 10 verses 29 through 37 here now the word of the Lord. A certain lawyer stood up before Jesus and asked him this, wanting to justify himself. He said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing wounded him and departed him, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw the man, he passed 
on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So, Jesus said, Which of these three do you think was neighbor to him? The man who fell among the thieves. And the lawyer said, he who showed mercy on him. And then Jesus said to him and to us, go and do likewise. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we live in troubled times. We live in times where people don't always seem to be getting along, do they? And we all want to live in a kinder, kinder gentler world, a, a nicer society and culture among people of all races, of all creeds, of neighbors who live next door and neighbors who are across the country. We want to focus on what we're not against, but what we are for in life. And that's our calling. We want to be people who are known for helping others, not walking away from others. In these days, the call is for Christians to show their compassion to everyone that they meet, to be compassionate, caring Christians among their neighbors. Jesus tells this familiar story that we have called the Samaritan or the Good Samaritan story. It's really a parable, an example for all of us to follow no matter where we are or when we live in life. And so he turns to this lawyer who's trying to wiggle around how to live in his life and what can I get away with. And he tells this story about a man who was on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. It's about a 17-mile walk. It descends about 3,000 feet from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And it was known as a dangerous road, full of thieves and robbers and murderers. And we discover someone who has fallen among those thieves and robbers. And he gives now three examples of three different people who walked by or walked among this man. The first example was, of course, the priest. Now, let me just say here that he's not talking about all priests and all rabbis and all pastors here. He's giving an example of one particular person who, as a religious leader, knew better, knew the law of Moses, knew the law of God, and should have followed. But it says this priest passed by. He, first of all, though, it says, he saw the man and he walked on. Now, Jesus doesn't dwell on why he walked on, and we can speculate that, well, if he saw the man and he thought he might be dead, he would have been unclean to a Jewish priest, and so he didn't want to have anything to do with him and would have kept going. That's speculation, and Jesus doesn't go into that. All he wants us to know is someone who knows the law of compassion didn't follow. 
And then he gives the second example of a Levite coming by. Now, the Levites were a group of men who worked at the temple. They weren't quite at the top of the working order, but they were there and worked in the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. And it says, again, this man walked by him, but it says here, he looked at him. He looked to see who he was and to see the man's condition, and yet he kept going. He kept walking by. And then Jesus gives the example of the third man, a Samaritan. To all who were reading God's word and hearing the story as Jesus told it, he would have recognized that this Samaritan was an outsider, not considered a full Jew, for the Samaritans had their own temple of worship. They had a, a certain scriptures that they followed, but not all the ones that the Jewish leaders went by. And so he sees the man. It says he saw him, meaning also that he came close enough to see who the man was, identify his needs, and then he acted. He acted in this situation. He didn't avoid it. It says he bound up his wounds. He used wine and oil, wine to uh, be an antiseptic and oil to smooth over the wounds. And then he took him to a nearby inn and stayed the night taking care of him. And then the next day, he said, here's some money to take care of this man till I come again. The Samaritan probably was a traveling salesman. And he would, on a regular basis, come by that inn. And so he didn't just care for him in the moment. He didn't just have compassion for a single second. But he took care of them, and then he saw to the man's need on a continual basis. And then Jesus turns to the lawyer. He turns to you and I and says, really, so who showed mercy? Who showed compassion to this man? Who was the neighbor? Well, the man is caught there. Who followed the law of Moses? Who did what the scripture in Leviticus and in Deuteronomy calls all people to do? Well, the man knew right away it was the Samaritan. And D Jesus didn't just say then, yes, well, you've got the answer right. He said, now go and do likewise. Look and see and be compassionate. Three people. Each saw, each looked at what was going on, but only one acted as they, as we, are called to do out of their faith, out of their belief, out of their true compassion. You see, compassion in Scripture is first and foremost a command of God. It's not a suggestion. God doesn't say, well, I hope sometime in whatever situation you find yourself, you would be a compassionate person. No, he commands us, go and do likewise. Go and be a compassionate person. Show your faith. He reminds them of Leviticus, those words that Jesus repeats. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall do it. You not, not that you might do it or you'll think about doing it, but you shall do it. A command and not a request to care for others. Beyond just words, beyond just thoughts of compassion and pity and kindness and caring, but a command. For us, that command then secondarily becomes a choice, a choice. Each saw, 
but only one chose to act. By his faith, he came and took care of that man. David Augsburger said, if you quit loving the moment it becomes difficult, you never discover compassion. You see, compassion happens by choice, and compassion is sometimes difficult. We've all done it. We've all seen people. We've walked by them on the streets, the homeless, the beggar, and have we stopped and looked in their eyes and talked to them? Have we done what we can do here? We have the blessing bags that are available. If you just want to come by the church office, you can pick one up, and it has a pair of socks, a bottle of water, and some other things that homeless people need. And at least in my experience in handing them out, they're very thankful for just these little things. It's a choice. Do we stop and act, or do we act like the priest and the Levite and keep on going? A command, a choice, and therefore a commitment. A commitment to own it, to do it, to act upon it, not just for others' sake, but really for our sake. You see, compassion is the job of the Christian. Compassion is not the job of a government, but of people. See, if we allow the government will take care of it, if we allow agencies will take care of it, if, well, I give my money, and that can be okay if you give it to the church or someone who's trying to help, but you make sure that it's going there, that's helpful. But really, it needs to be a commitment on our part because God is commanding us to choose to be compassionate all the time. John Holman said, there is no better exercise from the heart than reaching down and lifting someone up. Compassion in action. I challenge you this day, look. Look around you. What are the needs that you see? What are the things that are happening in your own neighborhood in these days? Are there people who can't get out and need help making phone calls to get food? Are there people in your neighborhood, your neighbors, who need a ride to see a doctor? Well, maybe you can't do it, but maybe you can help make sure that happens. Look for the needs that are around you. Don't ignore them, but see them. And then do that second thing. Look around everywhere, and in what way, therefore, can I act? What can I do in this situation for this person? How can I help? What is the best way for me to show compassion to whomever it is, whoever is your neighbor, whomever God puts on the road that you're walking? Compassion is for all people in all situations because holy people do holy things. There's a short video I want you to look out, and it's called Ticket Without a Seat. Let's take a look at it.
Compassion. Maybe it's giving up your seat, even when you're in better shape than somebody else, showing it. Don't be a stone-hearted saint. Be a caring, compassionate Christian today. God is calling each of us to do what we can, not to walk by those in need, but to lift them up and help them. We're each called to brighten the corner where we are. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, give us compassionate hearts. Give us the wherewithal, the commitment to act as we see needs around us so that we will be known as compassionate, caring people and that you, Jesus Christ, will be honored by what we say and especially by what we do. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light afar. To the many duties ever near you now be true. Right at the corner where you are. Right at the corner where you are. Right at the corner where you are. Right the where you are. Someone Just above our clouded skies that you may help to clear. Let not narrow self your way depart. Though into one heart alone you may put strong of cheer. Right on the corner where you are. Right on the corner. Is your neighbor. Maybe they do live next door or across the street. Or maybe it's somebody you'll encounter at the grocery store or on a walk or some other place. Maybe it's somebody in your family. Whoever the neighbor is, see them for who they are, but don't walk by. Stop and help, for it's the command of God, and it's the joy we receive for being the people God calls us to be. Let us go serving him now, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.